Hey guys, this is John from Sonic Drive Studio. Welcome to my channel. I recently released a video about Helix Native, and it was a video in which I demonstrate the plugin in clean, crunch, rock, and metal styles. I've put a link to that video in the description below, so please check it out before you watch this video. This video is going to be quite long, so I'm going to put the time codes in the description below. Then you can scroll easily to the desired part. So I have my uh, Cubase project loaded up right here, as you can see, and all the different styles are in this project. So we start with clean and we end up with eight string metal down here. And what I'd like to do today is just walk through the Helix native settings, explain some things, and also show you some processing that I did on the tracks. Now, before we go into detail and check out all the tracks, there are something that I need to show you which is that I'm loading the IRs in a different IR loader than in the Helix Native plugin. Now there's one main reason why I'm doing this and I'll show you. In the Helix Native plugin, you have an impulse section right here and you can load 128 impulses in here. It's a great number and you can really load a great selection of IRs here. It's more than enough for most people. The reason that Line 6 chose the same amount of IRs for the plugin as the hardware is probably because they want to keep the presets compatible for both platforms. So if you make a preset with the plugin, for example, you can load that into your hardware and vice versa. It makes a lot of sense and I really understand why they did this. The thing is that I just have a huge collection of Ownhammer IRs, thousands of IRs literally, and uh, by using an external loader, it's just a lot easier for me to browse through the different IRs and choose different ones for each session or each guitar tone. That's basically the only reason why I'm using an external loader. Most people won't need this option at all. But if you do, this is a freak plugin and uh, it's pretty helpful in my case. All right, guys, so let's start off with the tones here. We're starting off here with some clean tones, and the first tones here are clean tones with neck humbucking pickups from my JTV-59 Variax guitar. In the demonstration video, you can hear all the tones in band context with drums and bass. But for this video, I'm just gonna let you hear them all in solo without any drums or bass. Let's take a quick listen to the clean guitars with the neck humbucker pickup. Here we go. I really dig that sound. It's uh, pretty warm. It sounds a bit big because of the neck humbucker pickup. There's a lot of mids and there's a lot of body. At the same time, it's also a little sparkly, which is nice. So let's check out how I made these tones with Helix Native. Okay, so I'm starting off my chain with the input gate, which I'm using on all my presets. Of course, it's set to on and the threshold is set to about minus 82 dBs. Sometimes for high gain tones, I will raise this to about 70 or 60 dBs. Depends on the tone, really. And of course, it also depends on the amount of noise that you want to duck away with this noise gate. And I also always set my decay to the fastest setting, which is 10 milliseconds in this uh, case. Now let's move on to the next block, which is the dynamics block. I'm using this for a pedal compressor to even out the dynamics of the guitar before it hits the amp. I'm not using very extreme settings. As you can see here, threshold set to minus 25 dBs. Ratio is set to 3, attack is set to 50 milliseconds, release is also set to 50 milliseconds. It's a great and natural sounding compressor. I really like it. Then let's go to the amp lock. As you can see, I'm just using the single amp here, and I'm using the Jazz Rivet 120 amp, which is, if I'm correct, based on the Roland Jazz Chorus amp. Those are known for a very pristine and clean sound. And these are the basic amp settings that I'm using. Not a lot of drive because we want to keep it clean. We're boosting some presence here and cutting a little bit of mids because the guitar already has a lot of mids. So for the EQ settings, what you want to do is always try to find a good balance between the bass, the mids, and the treble, of course. So if your guitar sounds a bit too dark, add a bit of treble. And also add a bit of presence and see which one sounds best to your ears and find a balance between these two. Great amp. Then I'm using a reverb block here to add some room. I like this algorithm, so I use this very often. I use it with similar settings for each sound. In this case, the decay is set to 3.9. 
I might tweak this for sounds, so clean sounds will get a little bit more decay, and high gain tones tend to have a little less decay. And the mix control is also very important. Now let's take a look at the IR that I used for this tone. I'm using the Ownhammer 2x12 ZLFB cab with the H75 speaker option. Now this cabinet can be found in the Heavy Hitters Collection Volume 2. And as you can see, I'm using an Ownhammer 1F-06 file. This is a file from the Quick Start folder. Uh, for Ownhammer files, I tend to stick to those folders. They always sound good and they tend to be the most balanced. All right, so that's all for this tone. Let's also take a quick look at the processing, which I'm doing in uh, Cubase here. As you can see, I'm using the Slade Digital Virtual Mix Rack, as I always use, with the SSL emulation, the FGS over here. I'm almost doing nothing, I'm just cutting a little bit of lows here. You can also do this in the Helix Native plugin, but I just prefer this workflow. Okay, let's go to the next tone. This is also a clean tone, but this was played on my Fender Stratocaster on the fourth position, which is a blend between the neck pickup and the middle pickup. It's a really classic Stevie Ray Vaughan or John Mayer type tone. Let's take a listen. Yeah, it's a great sound, I really dig that. Alright, so I'm starting off the chain here with Podfarm actually. This is the Podfarm Elements plugin, and in this case it's the Dynamics section. I'm using this for the Blue Comp, just because I like the sound of this compressor a lot, and uh, it sounded great for this part, so why not? That's also the cool thing about Helix Native. When you're using it in your DAW, you can combine it with anything you like. I'm just using this again to even out the dynamics of the guitar a bit. Then of course, Helix Native. This time I'm using the Tweed Blues Normal channel. And these are the settings, nothing special happening here. If I recall correctly, I just dialed down the drive a little bit from the default settings and maybe added some treble and presence here. Nothing special, it sounds great out of the box basically. And this amp model works very well with single coil pickups and definitely with strats, so um, try this out. Then I'm going into the reverb block again, but this time I'm using the spring algorithm for a classic spring reverb sound. And these are the settings which I used. Again, not a lot of tweaking from the default settings. Great sounding reverb. Then we're going into the IR plugin again from Ignite. And this time I'm using the Ownhammer 1012 Tweed VN mix. Now for processing, again, I'm using the virtual mix rack with the FGS equalizer. And I'm just using this to remove a little bit of low mids at around 200 hertz. Just to make sure the guitar doesn't get in the way of the bass guitar. And of course I'm also cutting away some lows under 95 hertz. Also to make room for the bass guitar. Now let's check out the crunch tones. For the first crunch part I'm using the JTV 59 Variax again. This time I'm using the bridge humbucker. Let's take a listen. Yeah, that was just a great crunchy sound, very classic rock, reminding me of ACDC and Aerosmith. Let's check out Helix Native again and see what I did to achieve these tones. For the amp, we're using the Brit P75 Bright amp. This amp is great for achieving bold and fat plexi tones. I didn't need to do a lot of tweaking. I think I lowered the bass a little bit from the default settings, raised the mids and raised the treble which is a common thing for plexi-type amps to get a fatter tone. The drive has also been raised to 9.3, presence is set to 6.7. Other than that, I didn't tweak the default settings. Then we're going into the reverb block again. And again, set to room. Decay is set to 4.1, and the mix is set to 32%. If you like the subtle reverb tones that I'm getting here, all you need to do is just tweak the decay and the mix a little bit, and you'll have a great roomy sound. It just adds a little bit more dimension. 
Then let's check out the IR that I used. I'm using the Onhammer 4x12 MR82, which is based on a tall Marshall cabinet. And I'm using the M75B speaker option. As you can see here, again, I'm using a quick start file. Great big Marshall tone, love it. And as far as processing goes, again, I'm using the FGS module here. Only using this to cut lows under about 100 Hertz to make room for the bass guitar. We just don't need all that extra low end information. The next section is the crunch single coil section. It's more of an alternative rock type tone. Let's take a listen. In Helix Native, I'm starting off the chain with the distortion pedal. And in this case, I chose the Top Secret OD, which is a great pedal and is very simple. It only has gain and a level control. Gain is set to 4.5 and level is set to 8.3. I'm just using this to uh, give the guitars a bit more saturation and level before going into the amp. And I'm using the Mandarin 80 amp model, which is based on an orange amp. These are the settings that I'm using. Gain is set to 7.3. Bass is set to 6.2. If you're using single coil pickups like I'm doing in this uh, song, then you might want to raise this a bit more as opposed to when you're using humbucker pickups. Those tend to have a stronger low end. Mids is turned down to 4.1 and treble is raised to 7. Presence is set to 5. And other than that, I didn't do anything to change the default settings. Then again, we're using room reverb. In this case, decay is set to 4.5 and mix is set to 34%. Then let's take a quick look at the IR that I used. I chose to use the Onhammer 2x12 Orange V30, which is a great cab with a lot of mids. And of course, it works well together with orange type amps. I'm using the Onhammer 1 F file again for that big, sweet, low mid range. As far as processing goes, again, I'm only using FGS to cut some lows. Now let's move on to the heavy rock stuff. I'll play you a short section soloed. <laughs> Great tones here. For this heavy rock part, I used my ESP LTD Iron Cross, which is a James Hetfield signature, and it features EMG pickups. In this case, it features the headset, which are the James Hetfield signature pickups. They have a big sound and a lot of definition. So let's check out Helix Native again. Starting off the chain with the Kali rectifier amp, which is based on a Mesa Boogie rectifier. Drive is set to 8.2. Bass is set a little bit low because these amps tend to get a bit woofy in the low end, especially with humbucker pickups. So be careful with this control and balance it out a little bit. Mids are set to 4.2, treble is set to 5.4, and presence is set to 6.1. The reverb is also set to the room setting just like before, this time with a decay setting of 3.1 and a mix setting of 27%. So we just dialed this down a little bit to keep it a bit more subtle. As far as the cab IRs go, I'm using the Onhammer 4x12 Recto cab, which is uh, of course based on a Mesa Boogie rectifier cab. I'm using the V70B speaker option with the Quick Start Onhammer 1 file. Great for that classic and big Mesa Boogie sound. Again, I'm using the FGS here. I'm using this to cut some boxy mid lows at around 300 Hertz. Cutting this area can help if your guitars are a little bit too muddy. I'm cutting out all the lows under about 100 hertz, just as before. And after that, I'm using the F6 plugin from Waves. This is a dynamic equalizer. You can find a lot of info on YouTube about this uh, particular plugin. You can basically use each frequency band here as a compressor. And I'm using this just to duck down the resonant peaks in the low end. You tend to get some peaks there when you palm mute low notes with high gain amps. This makes sure that those frequencies all stay in balance, basically. When I play the track, you can really see it dug down. So every time there's a low palm muted note, 
this frequency gets dug down. Now let's take a look at the solo guitar section. Great sound there, very saturated and powerful. For this part I used my PRS SE Torero guitar. It's basically a PRS shred guitar with EMG pickups, it's a neck through body design and it has a Floyd Rose. In Helix Native I'm using the Archetype Lead Amp model which is based on the PRS Archon Amp. Drive is set to 6.9, bass is set to 4.4, mids are set to 5.6, treble is set to 5.8 and presence to 6.5. This amp features a depth control and you can use this to add low end after the preamp section. So it doesn't affect the distortion character. After that I'm using a delay in stereo mode and I chose the ping pong delay. So it goes back and forth between left and right basically. I have it synced up with the host in quarter notes. Feedback is set to 40% and mix is set to 33%. Nothing else here was changed from the default settings. And then I'm using a reverb block to add even more space. This time I'm using the plate model, which is great for lead tones or making things sound big. Decay is set to 5.2 and the mix is set to 31%. That's all that I did here. Now let's go to the IR loader again. In this case I chose the Ownhammer 4x12 Marshall Edward Van Halen cab, which is featured in the Heavy Hitters Collection Pack Volume 1. So I love this one for lead parts. Then after that I am using the Slade Virtual Mix Rack again, but this time with the FGN plugin. This EQ is based on a Neve EQ and I always use this for subtle coloring. In this case I'm using it to add some more warm mids, so I'm boosting 500Hz here a little bit and 1.5K. I can demonstrate what this is doing just by uh, playing the part and by bypassing and turning it on again. Check it out. So it's just fattening up the mids and it makes it sit in the mix a bit better. And as you can see I'm also cutting the lows under about 110 Hz. Let's check out the next part. This is a heavy metal part with humbucking pickups. For this part I used my Schecter SLS C1 guitar. It's a very comfortable guitar and it has Seymour Duncan passive humbucker pickups in it. So they have a lot of bite, presence and clarity. Let's take a listen. Great sounding crunch there. All right, so uh, in Helix Native, we're using the Kali 4 lead amp, which is based on a Mesa Boogie Mark IV. It's great for that metal crunch, and it's very well known for that too. Lead gain is set to 8.8, .8, lead drive is set to 8.4. Bass is turned down, because with these amps, if you turn down the bass, it just gets a lot tighter. I'm just going to play one of the guitars in mono and I'm just going to play with the bass control here so you can hear what it uh, does to your tone. So as you could hear, when I turned it up all the way, the sound got way too muddy and saturated. And when I turned it down, it got a little bit too thin. So I think around two is the sweet spot here. Definitely try experimenting with this with your own guitar to find the right sweet spot to get that crunchy, gnarly tone. Mids are set to 4.5, treble is set to 7.2, and channel volume to 8.1. Presence is set to 6.5, and I did lower the master a little bit here because the default settings are a bit high. If you turn this down lower, you'll notice that your sound gets brighter and a bit more scooped. So also experiment with this control. Another cool feature of these amps is the graphical equalizer. It has five sliders, one for the low frequencies, one for the low mid frequencies, one for the mid frequencies, one for the upper mid frequencies, and one for the treble frequencies. 
I've set this to the classic V, which is very common on those amps, especially for metal. So also try this out for a metal crunch. Then of course I'm also using the room block, just as before. Decay is set to 3.3 and mix is set to 32%. Again, I'm using the FGS EQ here to cut some lows under about 100 Hz again. And then just as before, for exactly the same purpose, I'm using the Waves F6 dynamic equalizer again, just to take care of those resonant low end peaks. Great, let's go to the next part. So this part has a more modern metal tone. It's kind of hardcore death metal inspired. And for this part, I used my ESP LTD SCT-607B, which is a seven string baritone guitar. It's the signature model for the guitarist of Deftones and it has EMG pickups in it. This guitar just works great for these types of tones. In Helix Native, I'm starting off the chain with the equalizer here and I chose the 10 band graphic equalizer I'm using this just to gently cut some lows and some low mids and to boost some upper mids going into the amp. This method tends to affect the distortion character, so it kind of determines how your guitar sounds. Similar settings are used often to achieve a genty type tone, so a tone with more definition. Then we're using the Angle Meteor, which of course is based on an angle amp. Drive is set to 5.4, bass is turned down a bit to 2.7, Mids are set to 5.5, treble is set to 6.5, and presence is set to 6.9. I'm not using the mid boost here, but that can be great for lead tones. Then again, the room reverb block, decay is set to 3.6, and the mix is set to 33% again. I'm using the Ownhammer 4x12 Eng, which is based on an angle cabinet with V30 speakers in it. And again, with the Ownhammer 1 quick start file. I absolutely love this cab for mean metal tones. Once again, I'm using the FGS plugin here in the Slate Virtual Mix Rack, cutting some mid lows at 200 Hz, just to make this guitar part sound a bit less muddy and to make it sound a bit bigger. Also filtering out the lows at about 82 Hz. And that's all for this track. Then let's move on to the final tracks, which are the eight string tracks. Let's take a listen. Great sounding 8 string parts here. I used a great guitar for this too. I used my Ibanez M80M, which is the Meshuggah signature model. Meshuggah was well known for using the old Line 6 Big Bottom amp model in the older Feta heads. And a little while ago, Line 6 updated the Helix software with the Line 6 Badonk amp. This amp is just crushing. It's amazing for downtuned metal guitars and it works very well for 8 string tones. So this amp should not be overlooked. Starting off the chain with the Tube Screamer model here. Gain is set to zero. Tone and level are turned all the way up. These again are very common settings for metal. Raising the tone like this will increase the definition of the guitar. Amp settings are as follows. Drive is set to 4.7. Bass is set to 5. Mids are set to 4.7. Treble is set to 5.9. And Presence is set to 6.9. And again I tweaked the depth control here. I only have it set to 0.9. And I'm using the room reverb again. Decay is set to 3.6 and mix to 30%. In this case, I'm using the Ownhammer 4x12 Emperor cab from the Heavy Hitters Collection Volume 2. And I'm using the C65 speaker option, again with the quick start Ownhammer 1 file. As far as post-processing goes, I'm not doing a lot, just cutting some low mids at about 275 hertz. And I'm cutting all the lows under 80 hertz. All right, so that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. And you can also follow us on facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio to stay up to date. Thanks a lot for watching.